Hello everyone and welcome to this video on Chiron in the second house in the birth chart. So in this video I'm going to be talking all about what that means and I'm going to be doing a general description as well as a sign by sign description such as Chiron and Aries in the first house and so on. And um, you know disclaimer with Chiron we're we're talking about something that's incredibly, incredibly, incredibly deep, and also incredibly painful and incredibly complex, and it's something that you know I can I can never really understand every Chiron placement. I can I can understand it from um, a more kind of academic point of view, and I can relate it somewhat to my experiences with my Chiron. But I don't have every Chiron. I only have. Chiron and Cancer in the 10th house. That's my Chiron placement. However, I can I can offer a summary of what the main themes are and I would encourage um, self, yeah, like research more into it. So what is Chiron? Chiron is the wounded healer from Greek mythology, centaur. And um, yeah, when we're talking about Chiron, we're talking about a lot of pain, usually emotional pain emotional wounds and um, when we think of Chiron we think of someone who might be in pain and they can use that pain to help others and that is a valid yeah I do believe that is a valid description however the way that I look at Chiron is yes Chiron is the wounded healer but we're talking about the wound and the healing referring to uh, a process going on with the self so it's not really so much like you can't you can help other people but it's more like the wound, the, the the pain and the healing is it's about the self. So, the wounded healer, that applies to the self, you know. So, primarily, and then and then you know you can help other people if you have you know learned how to kind of heal. But it's it's I view it primarily as a journey with the self, you know, rather than being about you know helping other people uh, first. Like that to me comes after. So. Yeah, it's never going to go away. That's the thing. It's not like it's going to go away, but you, you can get better at dealing with it. You can integrate the lessons and the pain and you can become stronger. So that's that's how I would view that. Like, you know, Chiron, is, it's always going to be there, but how you perceive it and how you experience it, it can change uh, a lot for the better, you know. So, yeah, it's super, super, super important. You know, you might think that um, it's not one of the, the personal planets, it's not the sun, it's not the rising, it can't be a big deal, it is a big deal, very big deal, and I don't feel that you can really truly understand uh, a person's birth chart without Chiron, you're missing a big part of the picture, in my opinion, I don't, you know, there might be people that don't work with Chiron, that's completely valid, um, but for me personally, I think you're missing out on a lot if you don't use Chiron, you know, so, so yeah, what, so, so what is Chiron? Chiron is a centaur from Greek mythology. He was not mortal, so he couldn't uh, die from traditional means. And, um, he worked a lot with medicine. He, uh, yeah, taught a lot of people. Uh, he was an astrologer. He wasn't really like the other centaurs who were more like warlike or combative, competitive adventurous he was more like I want to be at home sort of so he was a bit different from the other centaurs and he had a friend called Hercules and uh he was under Chiron was under attack one day and then Hercules came to his rescue but he accidentally hit him with an arrow and it caused a pain that never went away because there were special arrows or something um and because he couldn't die he was in this constant pain for a long 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 time eventually he did find rest this is you know if you want like a complete breakdown on Chiron and everything about Chiron this isn't the video but that is just a kind of summary about Chiron so we're, we're talking about a lot of pain um that won't go away you know so some might think that's depressing you know pain is a part of life you know um and we're not powerless to it. Like I'm saying, there's a lot of things that we can do with Chiron to help uh, integrate it and become stronger to it, you know? So, 
yeah so chiron in the second house how does this manifest well what is the second house this is the house of values it's the house of self value it's the house of our possessions our income our money it's not the house of money but it, yeah it's the house like you can't summarize it you know it's like this is the house of money it's like this is the house of values um and also safety and things that we desire and money is part of that but it's it's only part of that you know so your home your nest your retreat your safety security stability comfort personal values what you like what you want what makes you feel good comfortable it's associated with venus and taurus you know this, the planet of beauty and the sign of stability strength and comfort so this is the second house you know so when Chiron is in the second house, could you consider this house to be in damaged or in pain or some or somehow? Yeah, you 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 could. You could. So, this means what does this mean? Well, your second house uh, is a source of pain. Okay, and um. Rec so 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 how does that manifest? Well, there yeah there could be um com discomfort where there should be comfort. And what do I mean by that? Well, there could have been. A lack of safety it could have been a lack of comfort a lack of stability a lack of the the home the the hearth the the security these things especially when you're young may have been damaged somehow such as poverty moving from place to place parents fighting uh, something bad going on in the home a uh, sense of unease and like, okay, I'm supposed to feel safe, I'm supposed to feel good, but I don't. We're supposed to have all this stuff, and, and but but we don't have it, you know. So it could be material poverty, it could be emotional poverty. You know, something has happened to make you just not feel comfortable, you know. And um, a fear of loss, because I think that because you've experienced this, you're maybe scared of, of further loss. And security is like knowing that yeah no we're not we're not guaranteed to promise security or safety or stability now, actually getting used to that even integrating it into your own psyche or expectations like this is just how it is you know getting used to that and then that becomes a problem on its own so another way that this could manifest is you know because because second house we're dealing with actual practical tangible things like i'm saying but we're also dealing with intangible things such as uh, personal values, you know. So when Chiron is in the second house, well, personal values can be a source of pain. Why is that? Well, it, how, what ways could that manifest? Well, you may have been shamed for your values. You know, oh, the things you like, they're weird. The things you like, they're, they're not good. We don't like that. You're, you're different you don't like the same things that other people like you don't want to do the same things other people want to do you don't want to generate income the way that we expect you to and um yeah like the, the things that you like it yes yeah, was weird you maybe don't fit in with your what what you want to do and you value and live your life in a way that um can can bring pain and and even even if there isn't like over like overt judgment which there probably is, but even if there isn't, just the fact of that you value things that are different and you want to do things that are different, that that intrinsically does, it can make things like more difficult, you know? So, yeah, that's, the, you know, so um, another, another thing as well, it's just like, yeah, not being able to access those things that you value, you know? Like you want, but you don't have, there's a lack there, you know? Like this is this is the stuff I want. This is the way that I want to live, and yeah, it, it's you find it really hard to to have that, you know. So, yeah, values, safety, comfort—it's a source of pain, you know. So, re yeah, redefining values on what you want, like because you might have forfeited what you want in a uh, change of in it in place of what is easy or what is expected. But that, like I'm saying, that that becomes a source of pain. Like you're not living true to the, what you value and what you want. You're not, you know, potentially that is one of the ways it could happen. So that's what I'm saying, like redefining your values and 
and rediscovering what it is that what the what your values your core values you know so that's really chiron in the second house now what does it mean by sign okay so chiron and aries and the second house so low self-esteem not really valuing oneself second house the house of values aries is the sign or what's what chiron has been filtered through and that is uh of the self so lack of self value sense of isolation i have to be a fighter i have to rely on myself i have to to struggle um i can't rely on other people when it comes to accumulating safety security wealth i have to be on my own and i have to fight really hard for it and i have to stand up for myself um because other people are saying you can't have that or it's hard and you have to be that aries that fighter energy you know you might have come up against other people who are very arian uh fighting you saying you can't have that you shouldn't have that um difficulty in the home coming into the home whether maybe they're there in the first place or there's a sense of your sanctuary being invaded or having to fight very hard for it or there's conflict here so yeah self-belief can be low it, it doesn't mean it's always going to stay that way but you really have to fight really hard and um embrace your individuality your independence and being a fighter it can be a very very good thing you know um learn to heal by valuing trusting yourself and trusting your ability to take appropriate action and trusting that yeah that it's um believing in yourself because aries is the sign of action well when that's wounded it's like oh taking action that's um it might be that you're worried that you do it wrong or that you um over assert or whatever people might make you feel guilty for asserting yourself about what it is that you want and what you need it could be kind of gaslighting emotional manipulation you know standing up for yourself and then other people are making you feel bad for that and you might question yourself and you're like um am i doing the right thing you know so you really have to believe in yourself here and it's 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 a hundred percent acceptable to to stand up for yourself and fight for the, your values you know so Chiron and Taurus in the second house well Taurus is already associated with the second house so it's almost like it's uh it's double <laughs> you know like this is strong and it's a strong clear message a strong indicator if you have Chiron and Taurus in the second house it's a super clear theme like it's really speaking to you here well it's, it is that for everything but this is so strong so money and material security and safety are yeah they're likely to be something that is painful for you likely you uh don't have it or you haven't had it and there's a poverty consciousness here a fear of poverty and a scent and that persists even if you have money you know like because you maybe know what it is to not so it's like could be hoard hoarder tendencies here it's never enough i need to accumulate more money more stuff hard to let go yeah i'm getting kind of like it could be hoard hoarder energy here you know hard to let go of things it might be feeling that you're not doing and you, you don't have enough and you're, you're still not safe enough still don't have enough money in the bank and um you know i'd say like heal through being able to achieve a sense of calm groundedness serenity you know physically with the body connect with nature you know uh access tap into that sense of safety and tranquility which is not easy for you like it's not easy for you but yeah art music self-expression food nice things nice home you know i would say obviously don't overindulge with this stuff because that could be a source of pain as well i'm saying with the overindulgence that could be a source of pain feeling that you know um that that that's that's it so yeah moderation balance groundedness that that is a thing you know um here with taurus uh chiron in the second house so that's what i would say for that gemini iron in the second house so yeah communication of what you're all about being misunderstood feeling unheard um you know you've maybe made it feel really clear how you feel from an emotional point of view about situations 
and uh, trying to get people to listen and they don't listen, feeling like you don't have a voice or when you do have a voice, people, yeah, like people don't listen. Other people are always telling you what to do. And um, you could be feeling disregarded, you know, um, speaking up for yourself. Yeah, it could be painful. There's probably a potential lot of anger or frustration that could come from this placement. Understand, you know, that some people are just, they're never going to listen. They're never going to understand. They're never going to see you. They're never going to hear you. Some people, that's just how it is. And that can be really painful, really frustrating. You know, like, why can't they just listen? You know, so it's tough, you know, but um, I would say healing comes from understanding that, that yes, yeah, some people aren't going to listen. And some people, when you speak, they're not going to respect it. When you have the self-respect, that's the main thing. And when you when when you know what it is you want, and when you know not having to rely on the other person to kind of under to to be understood or to feel comfortable or to feel secure, to just know that you're good on your own, you know, um, I think that is a path to healing. You know, it could also be that there's been a lot of. Yeah, because second house, you know, it's supposed to be strong, stable. And when you got Gemini in there and it's Chiron, it's like, uh, yeah, again, this wasn't, you know, and there could have been a lot of moving around. There could have been a lot of mishaps and changing. And there's, yeah, a, a real sense of like, like I'm saying, fundamentally with Chiron in the second house, where there's comfort, there's mercurial energy where, where where there should be comfort and stability there there's things that are very changing and changeable and and that and that is that can be very painful and, and disconcerting you know so i would say yeah just um learning to yeah embrace that yeah life isn't always like things aren't always so stable and that uh, people aren't always going to be a hundred percent great to you you know, but learning to find peace with that and um, the self -re self reliance with like, well, I don't need people to be a certain way, you know what I mean? Or I can roll with the punches if things change or whatever, I'm just going to deal with it, you know? So that's what I would say for Gemini, Chiron in the second house. Now, Cancer, Chiron in the second house. You may feel that you are being made to feel that you're too sensitive. Are you too empathetic to the point where it hurts or it's a detriment? Putting other people first, putting your family first and them not appreciating it. Uh, you may feel that you don't get kind of love or nurturing that you need or you feel like you, you know, you really want. So seeing the value in yourself and learning to accept and love yourself, provide for yourself and Cancer is a sign of safety and security, you know, and that is a source of pain. So family has maybe not provided that for you, especially, you know, when you're young and uh, having to support your own self emotionally, that, that can be really painful, you know, and um, that source is like within you, you know, and it's like that you know like that doesn't mean you're always going to have to be self-relying or whatever but yeah having to like being able to access that so you're not always being hurt <laughs> boundaries you know like not being hurt by family not maybe always allowing to do them to do that um cancer in the second house so i think that yeah just having that boundaries you know so and like you know because i have cancer uh, in chiron it's not in the second house it's in the 10th house and it's like uh, yeah like it's certainly family karma you know there's a lot of family karma here in your second house and um it's learning well learning how to step away from emotions sometimes you know it's almost like there's this deep feeling of like well the more emotions the better the more empathy the better the more uh family whatever almost like the better and it's like no sometimes it's not like that sometimes you're you're gonna have to just rely on yourself and provide for yourself and put down emotional walls and barriers and be like well enough's enough and you know and self gonna be more self-reliant you know so 
yeah, that's they haven't necessarily provided you with all you need, and they might never will, you know. So and that that is a source of pain there with Chiron uh, in the second house and uh, Cancer. So Chiron and Leo in the second house. What does this mean? Well, it could feel like you don't have anything to offer people, or that when you do, you you know you're worried. You feel like other people wouldn't appreciate it. You might feel that you know your your values they're um they're not yeah they're not um respected and it's like you also might feel like you can't have a lot of fun with it with with um your your money or that when you do you feel guilty about it like you could you could spend a lot of money on things that are fun or on other people and then you might maybe spend too much or those other people don't appreciate it or you could get yourself into trouble Gam gambling maybe leo second house because that's it's the house of finance and stability chiron and leo there leo likes to play have fun party gamble you know it's the more the shadow side of leo and when that happens that puts your second house in detriment you know so it is like a, it's it's themes of fun and self-expression and risk taking like feeling like i can't do it i can't do that i can't do that and then feeling like feeling like when you do it's it's almost like um a worry that it could go wrong you yeah i think that you feel like you maybe have to be more about other people and um not focus on yourself so much because second house is your values leo is like more self-centered not like self-centered but like self-centered and chiron in there like maybe be made to feel guilty when you do focus on yourself maybe um be made to feel like it's you know everybody should be able to express these leonian traits and um but this is a source of pain for you so maybe feeling like you you can't spoil yourself and you can't express these things or you can't self-indulge but like you definitely can it's okay to do that it's you know it's good to do that sometimes and i had to have fun you know so healthy self-expression is good and um you know you can be creative and you can have fun and you, yeah you can spoil yourself sometimes too you know so it's like i just think there should be a balance here and this maybe is the balance that maybe you need like i'm saying it's like it's maybe too much or not enough or you feel that like when you exp yeah when you express leo traits you feel like that that somehow damages or puts your second house your values your money at risk so this is i'm finding this to be more of a complicated one this is um i hope i'm being clear a little bit on this you know i just think that um give yourself permission to be like leo you know give yourself permission to do that fun self-expression living in the moment you know, there there also might be a feeling that I need to focus on the future, I need safety and security for the future and then not living in the moment. So I would say like learn to live in the moment, like don't don't let yourself feel too bad about that, you know, because it's it's a good thing. So uh, Chiron, second house and Virgo. So super difficult, super, like super hard on yourself and then it feels like super difficult energy here when it comes to money and stability, like... Um, Virgo is, you know, a service to other people. And then Chiron is just painful. And that is your values. So, like, you really, really, really want to help people. You're there for people. You, and uh, you feel like you could always be doing more, always helping more people out more and um, be doing better for yourself, you know. Um, so there's there's anxiety and there's stress here when it comes to when it comes to the home money and values and everything. And um, it's okay not to like maybe like worry all the time. And it's okay to not be so hard on yourself, you know. And you don't have to be so perfect. And it's okay to um, not be a perfectionist, you know. And it's like, yeah, like you, you need to be able to. Um, like this is, this is, you know, it's Mercury in the second house again because it's Virgo. And it's through Chiron. So it's painful that you are mercurial in the second house. 
So there's anxiety here, like a lot of anxiety here about um, money and stability and safety. So, yeah, it's like, you know, you have to make sure things are good for yourself in this area of life. But then at that point, just kind of like allow yourself to, to some downtime after that, you know, because uh, otherwise it's just worrying beyond the point where it would help at all. You know what I mean? And uh, super modest as well. And also, yeah, this is, this is a kind placement. It's also like, yeah, putting other people first a lot, you know. Um, and it's like, it's it's all right not to do that all the time, you know. So Chiron and Libra in the second house. So yeah, this is, you know, similar to Virgo, putting other people's needs before your own often, others' values before your own. You know, you might feel like, well, I have to like what they like, or at least seem to do that. The change to fit what other people would like, maybe fear of being alone or fear of being self-reliant. Libra is the, the sign of like, you know, the duality, the partnership. Um, so valuing the other sometimes more than yourself. Um, and all of that, you know, self-sacrifice as well. You know, it maybe doesn't bring the peace and equilibrium that you think it will. And uh, you could end up sacrificing your own values at a big cost, like a big cost, and selling yourself short. And then maybe being confused about what you want. So it's like you don't always have to do that. You know, be so super thinking and considerate about what other people want, what the other person wants. This, I think this is like in a relationship or whatever. It's kind of like you value the other person so much that um, it hurts. Or there's maybe some karma or pain here about that. And um, it's like the other person's values, the other, what the other person wants doesn't always have to be what you want and what you value. So that's what I would say for that. Uh, Chiron and Scorpio in the second house. So, yeah, loss consciousness, fear consciousness, death consciousness, experiences of losing, yeah, money, safety in the home. It's almost like fear of home invasion or fear of death, um, something bad happening in the home early on, sense that you're not safe, sense that you could lose everything or something's going to happen and you have to be super careful, super, super switched on super observant so extreme discomfort potentially in the second house about money about safety about the home living situation could be complicated money tied up with someone else messy situation business you know re relying on someone else it could be a feeling of like well i can't make it on my own or relying um on some sort of complicated situation or someone else you know, because that can be a Scorpio thing. And it's like, you know, uh, how do you heal that? Well, understand that, um, you know, you can be good on your own and that um, things probably aren't as precarious and dangerous as you perceive them to be. It's probably past experiences that has made you feel this way. And yeah, that can be repeated in adulthood, but I do think there's like a tendency to, even if something's bad, there's a tendency, I think, to just view things as being even more dangerous or even worse than it, that, than it actually is, you know? Um, it could be paranoia about money or... Yeah, I just again there there's this, there's a sense of discomfort where things, you know, should be comfortable and safe. You know, so I would say yeah, try try to access feelings of safety around the home, around money, around stability. Um in any way that you can. So Chiron and Sagittarius in the second house. So big desire for freedom. Okay, there could be a lack of freedom. You could feel that you're too locked in to routine, normality, stability. You might feel that, um, yeah, like what what you want, you can't have, or your 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 because that second house is like the house of you know like the, you know basically like the home and stability, money and safety. With Sagittarius, it's all about like you know freedom and travel and being far away, and so your home is more potentially. Um, 
transient or you travel a lot it could be that you really enjoy doing this but for some reason you're maybe criticized or you don't fit in or it's not what people expect and um people think that you're maybe too free spirited you get criticized for that i think that or maybe that you just find that you are traveling a lot and maybe that maybe you don't enjoy that but there's definitely themes of yeah uh, yeah instability through tr through travel and through change and um through being physically far away or having to go far away and like i'm saying this could be something that you enjoy but that causes some sort of pain or discomfort from judgment or difficulty that you have with that or that you are somehow made to live this lifestyle and you don't want it but either way those themes are there with this placement um so yeah and it's like definitely live to your own values you know Sagittarius is about what you believe you know um and what you know what, what you really want and this second house is the house of values um so it's what you believe is uh, is so important to to be true to that you know um I think that you maybe are being made to live or act in a way that is not in accordance to your beliefs and this is this is painful so but then when you do you face backlash for that you know um which is which is more difficult for you I, I think you know being true to oneself like if you're really really not true to yourself what you really want what you need deep down that creates a really 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 deep pain and a sense of emptiness and a sense of yes yeah, spiritual pain and I think that being criticized for being true to your beliefs is well or or difficulty from that well that's very painful it's not as painful as the more deep seated spiritual pain that comes from not living true to your own values so uh chiron and capricorn in the second house so yeah you might feel like you're not getting the recognition that you desire from yourself similar to virgo you could be really difficult uh, like hard on yourself and there's really difficult energy here when it comes to um, achievement you have to work really hard for for everything you got and it's not easy and uh, you probably yeah, work all the time or you're worried about money all the time and you maybe yeah even when you're at home you're 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 always like on emails or whatever work follows you home when you're trying to relax you can't relax because there's work stuff that needs to be doing and it needs to be getting done uh because capricorn is a sign of work and second house uh, is the ha house of values and comfort and money so you probably you could be either extreme poverty or being very wealthy but also it's painful for you because you end up not having any free time so just the feeling that you can't relax you know um ambitious i think you're very ambitious and that can be great i think yeah like it's important to allow yourself downtime and that's super important and i think as well that um yeah like you know i would say that's the main that's the main thing you know that um capricorn you know capricorn chiron second house like yeah like i'm saying it could be that you're having to work really hard or whatever you know so there are different ways that this could manifest but um i just think that yeah the main thing is to find a sense of safety and security and i think that comes from balance you know work-life balance i'd say work-life balance is the, is the key here to uh, achieving like more peace so chiron and aquarius in the second house so yeah your values are just different like you are just different aquarius is the sign of the the unique individual that doesn't fit in when you got chiron there that's you like you don't fit in and you are different and that's painful and when that's in the second house like yeah the things that you value the things that you enjoy the things that you want to do and the way that you want to generate income is different it's unique strange or ahead of your time and you get judged for that so judge for who you are judge for the way that you want to get money not not super traditional you're not really a traditional person that wants to do like the, the the normal path you have a different way an aquarian way of generating income and living values and your home may be different and yeah aquarius gets judged like crazy you know by people 
who don't understand aquarian people you know so there's you know super uh unique aquarian pain here you know and um you know aquarius like super like wants to help people a lot you know it's kind humanitarian that is part of your values like you're really charitable or really wanting to help people a lot you know um there could be pain here for not being appreciated for your efforts or wanting to help people and they don't they don't recognize it you know um so yeah i mean i would say yeah just recognize you are different recognize it's a good thing and you're doing things different um and with Aquarius, I always say, like, what, what people are maybe making fun of you for, for doing or criticizing you for doing, they're going to end up doing the same two weeks from now, two years from now. Aquarius is, like, ahead of the curve, you know? So enjoy that. Enjoy that. Respect that about yourself, you know? Um, so that's what I would say about that, you know? Um, yeah, I think it's good to be different. Uh Chiron and Pisces in the second house. Well, yes, yeah, super kind to other people, wanting to share basically everything. Um, maybe you share so much and there's not not so much boundaries. Maybe you get you get burned financially, you know, because you're super super giving and universal. Um, just want to help these people out, and that could lead to loss, financial loss, discomfort in the home. You know. Um, could be the yeah you don't necessarily you're not so good with with money you don't really understand it um i think that yeah your your values are almost like they don't fit into the world because pisces doesn't fit into the world it's already kind of in the next realm realm like um as universal kind of consciousness as universal love those are your values and that's painful because you have this something that at times it goes beyond kindness into something else that maybe, maybe we don't have a word for and many people probably really really appreciate that or that brings you just uh you know this, this is really great but it can lead to to loss and a lack of stability you know or you might feel that um people aren't respecting your boundaries you know it's not like you can't have boundaries it's not like you're always super like i need to help everyone but I think that that's painful for you. I think that you lack, yeah, you could lack boundaries, yeah, and in, in the home with money, people can step over your boundaries or whatever, and you, that you find that complicated. Maybe you were raised in a way to be like, well, you should always put the other person first, you know? You should always be Piscean about money, about your stuff, about your, you know, but you can't because, you know, we live in a world where, like, you, you do have to have boundaries, you know, and it's okay to have that, so... That's what I would say to Pisces, Chiron in the second house. So yeah, that's about it for this video. I hope it was useful. Um, thanks for watching.